So I started the recordings. Okay. I will introduce myself again then. And my name is Callum Roberts and I'm Professor of Marine Conservation at the University of York in England. So what is it about the deep sea that makes it so remarkable and so different from shallow water environments? The deep sea is an incredibly extreme environment. Uh, once you go down thousands of meters, the pressure becomes absolutely immense. It's completely dark and uh, the, the temperature drops to a few degrees centigrade. So this is a very, very different place to the dynamic shallow water environment where there's lots of uh, water energy and, and currents and sunlight. Are there features of deep sea species that make them especially vulnerable to human activities? Deep sea organisms have evolved in this extreme place that they live in and some of those adaptations mean that they are extremely vulnerable to damage and death by human activities, especially fishing and in particular deep sea life lives at a very very slow pace, almost a glacial pace. The reason for that is that the, the animals are living on what might be termed table scraps, dropping from the sunlit surface zone. Uh, there's, there's no photosynthesis deep down in the ocean, and that means that there's no primary production for the animals to live on. They depend entirely on food coming down from the surface. And that little drip drip, that trickle of food is slow, which means that the, the organisms have to be able to cope with uh, uh, a very low food intake, which means that they grow incredibly slowly and they live for a very long period of time. Bottom trawling has been shown to result in extensive habitat damage in shallow water. What are the impacts of bottom trawls on deep sea bottom habitats likely to be? Well, bottom trawls were one of the most destructive fishing methods that we've managed to invent. And in fact, when it was first introduced in the 14th century, the commoners petitioned the king to have the instrument banned because they perceived it as being too destructive. It caught too many juvenile fish and it swept away the habitat that the other fish depended upon. So we've seen that the trawl has been incredibly controversial over the centuries and it's still extremely controversial now that we've moved into the deep sea. What happens there is that the, the trawl essentially sweeps away all that uh, lives on the seabed uh, when it's scooping up the fish near the bottom and that means that uh, it's an extremely destructive method wherever you use it and particularly so in the deep sea where life lives at such a slow pace. Do you think bottom trawls should be used in the deep sea or should, be the, or should they be completely excluded in favor of some other gear? Well, I think bottom trawls should never have been introduced into the deep sea. And if we knew then what we know now, then I don't think people would ever have begun. It, it simply isn't a place where life can cope with the impacts that trawling creates. So uh, in my view, we should withdraw from the deep sea in terms of fishing with bottom trawls and, and actually all methods of fishing in the deep sea because um, the, the animals down there are simply not productive enough that they could be able to supply us with a sustainable source of seafood at anything like economic fishing intensities. So the, the, the deep sea isn't the place that we can look for uh, food for humanity. Instead, we need to manage the shallow waters much better than we do today and, and uh, make use of their prolific productivity. So you don't think that even uh, we should even use other gear such as bottom long lines perhaps in, for fishing for deep sea species? I don't think any form of fishing in the deep sea is actually sustainable because uh, the animals have such long lives, they reproduce very late in life and uh, the rate of removal of these things by fishing is just going to be too great for them to be able to keep up. So I think that the deep sea isn't a place we should fish at all. Uh, I want to back up just a sec, just a minute. You were talking about uh, the the incredible low productivity and long liveness of the deep sea species, but we also have heard that deep sea species are incredibly fragile. Can you explain why that is? Well. In the deep sea, uh, life does not have to be able to cope with a high energy environment. So if you're a shallow water fish, then you're able to be, uh, you need to be able to be swept around, you need to be bumped uh, against things from time to time. 
but in the deep sea there are no such uh, uh, energetic environments and that means that animals are often very very thin skinned they they are easily damaged by even a small amount of, uh, uh, of brushing by some fishing method so uh, particularly in trawls everything that is brought to the surface is is destroyed essentially all the bycatch all the seabed life it's dead and uh, there's no prospect of recovery for any of it even if it's thrown back in the sea immediately so do you have um, based on some of the things that you've said uh, do you have any sense of how long it would take for a deep sea bottom community to recover uh, should trawling uh, be stopped in any particular area well, given that some animals in the deep sea can live for hundreds or even thousands of years, I mean, the uh, oldest Gorgonians have been dated at thousands of years old, like uh, some of the giant sequoias in, in the western United States. These, once they're, once they're gone, they're not going to recover in any kind of meaningful human timescales. We destroy them once, and then they are gone for our own and future generations. For an area to recover fully from the impact of bottom gears is going to take centuries to a thousand years or more. Excellent. And you're in focus. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, figure it 